Hello, my name is Craig Ashifa, and I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco Server Access and Virtualization Group. This video is part of a series that is intended to show some of the unique advantages made possible by Cisco's server offering called the Unified Computing System, or UCS for short. This video will show the viewer the ease of configuring a boot from SAN service profile, the ease of cloning this boot from SAN service profile, and the ease of moving the boot from SAN service profile between different UCS servers. So let's go through the various features within UCS that allows us to ease the SAN boot, SAN boot setup process. So within UCS, um, you create the SAN boot through a service profile. So rather than having to go through the BIOS to go ahead and set that up manually, you go ahead and set it up through a service profile. So let's go ahead and create a service profile and show you how easy it is for, for that service profile creation. If I create the service profile, I'm going to call it SAN boot demo. Click the next button. I'm going to choose the expert mode that gives me a little bit more flexibility in my creation. As you can see here, I'm going to choose the worldwide node name for my, VA, for my VHBAs through a pool that I created earlier. Um, I'm using the Cisco VIC um, M81KR card, which allows me to create the virtual HBAs and virtual Ethernet NICs. So rather than having to use the burned in numbers, I can go ahead and create those manually from a pool that I preset. I'm going to add my, my VHBAs. I'm just the first one I'm going to call FC0. I'm going to leave it on Fabric A. I'm going to select the vSAN I configured earlier called Fabric, SAN Boot Fabric A. And since this is going to be a Windows boot that we're setting up, I'm just going to set the adapter policy as Windows. Up here, again, I'm going to choose the WWPN assignment from a pool that I had created earlier. Hit OK. I'm going to click another, add another one. It's going to be FC1, my second VHBA. This one's going to be assigned to Fabric B. I'm going to assign that to SAN Fabric B, the vSAN. Again, the adaptive policy is going to be Windows. And the WWPN, I'm going to grab from a pool that I pre-configured earlier. Hit OK. Here's my two VHBAs there. Click Next. This is the Ethernet screen. I'm going to keep defaults here. On the VNIC VHBA placement screen, I'm also going to keep defaults. I don't need to configure this right now. The server boot order is an important screen. We're going to have to go ahead and customize that a little bit because this is where we're going to specify that this is going to be a boot from SAN. So I'm going to create a specific boot policy. I'm going to add the initiator, which will be VHB0, which I called FC0. I'm going to associate the SAN boot target to that VHBA. I'm going to keep the boot target line as zero. And then later on, when you go ahead and mask that particular um, LUN on the storage system, you'll just make sure that that LUN, that the host ID matches this boot target LUN ID of zero. Now, I'm going to grab, go ahead and paste the target ID. I know this is the target ID of the service processor on the EMC VNX that I'm using right now as a storage system. I'm going to click OK. There I have my, my, boot, my boot initiator and my boot target. You need to add a CD-ROM here as well. This is important for when you go ahead and, and um, map to your vMedia, that it goes ahead and, and boots to the vMedia so you can install the Windows install. Then click Next. Maintenance policy, I keep default. Server assignment, I'm going to go ahead and actually explicitly assign this server. I could have taken it from a pool um, of resources, but at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and explicitly state um, select the, the server in slot 2. Click Next. Operational policies, I'm going to click, I'm going to leave this at default. Now I'm going to click Finish. There's my summary screen for the service profile that I'm going to be building. Click Yes to accept it. Once it's created, it'll give me an OK button. I click OK. It'll take me back to the UCS menu. And there's my new service profile for my boot. So now that we've created our service profile uh, for our SAN boot, let's go ahead and, and just verify that everything is OK. There's our SAN boot demo. This is, this is the service profile we created. The overall status of this is OK. Our power state is up, and it's associated. So from here, what we would do is we would go ahead and grab the WWPN of this, go to our SAN, and zone this WWPN of the initiator to the target 
of the storage system. After that, we go to the storage system, and you go ahead and mask this WWPN to the target line. And once all that's done, you go ahead and do a KVM console, you'd map your vMedia, install Windows to that target line, and then you have your boot from SAM. So what else can we do that's cool within UCS to, as a time saver from a boot from SAM perspective? So one thing you can do is you can do a clone. So I can clone my service profile. Let's go ahead and create a new service profile off the original one. I'm going to call this one SAN Boot Demo 2. Click OK. It'll go ahead, as you can see, it created another service profile called SAN Boot Demo 2. So what did it actually do within SAN Boot Demo 2? So if you go to the storage tab on here, you'll see that it assigned a new WW node name. And again, this was pulled from a pool. And this is unique from the original SAN Boot Demo that we had. As you can see here, this is 1F. If you go to SAM Boot Demo 2, you'll see this is 1E. So it actually assigned a new WW node name to that automatically. And the same thing for WWPNs. It went ahead and grabbed two available WWPNs from the WWPN pool and assigned them to the VHBAs. Going to the boot order, it went ahead and replicated everything that I did originally in the, in the SAN Boot Demo service profile into our new service profile demo. If I expand this, and I go into the VHBA, you'll see that it kept the fabric ID and the, and the vSAN that it's supposed to be assigned to, as well as also set the adapter policy. Anything else that I would have customized here, I would have went ahead and brought over as well within that clone. That just saves, saves additional time if you need to have a number of clones that you have to create. Now from here, I would go ahead and associate this with hardware. Again, I would go over to my SAN, grab the WWPN, zone it to, to, the, to the target WWPN. Once that's done, I'll go over to the storage system, mask the WWPN to the target line, go to KVM. Once it's associated, the KVM would show up. Then go ahead and map the vMedia, install Windows, and then I would have another boot from SAN instance. So that's the clone feature. So what's next? So we've created a service profile. We've showed how easy that is to do. We've created a clone and showed how useful and easy that can be. So let's go ahead and do the, something from an operational perspective. Let's go back to our SAN boot demo, the first one that we did, that we had, which is already associated with a server. Now let's say, for instance, that here's a couple scenarios. One is the server that is currently on is failing. There's something is wrong with it or has failed hard. Uh, how do we go ahead and move that service profile over to a new piece of hardware um, without you know, making it easy as possible? Or say we need to move this particular blade um, that has a certain amount of resources to either one that has more resources or one that has less resources. What's the process to make it that done? So what we need to do is we need to disassociate the service profile from the hardware and reassociate that with a new piece of hardware. So if we come over here to the service profile, right-click it, go to Change Service Profile Association. Click Server Assignment. Click selecting a, Select Existing Server. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose the server in slot 1. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to tell me that it'll go ahead and immediately reboot the one that, that it's already associated with and use the new server. Hit yes there. Hit OK. As you'll see here, it went ahead and now it's associating it with the new server. And the old server is being disassociated as we speak. And that's all it is. In order to move a profile from one server to another server, it's just a couple clicks and you're done. And when this comes back up in the KVM, it'll be running on a new piece of hardware without any new other configurations having to be done except for what we just did, which was a dissociate, a reassociate, and that's it. To recap, SAN booting can be a challenge in many environments, and UCS service profiles, cloning, and flexible blade association features helps by reducing repetitive and time-consuming tasks associated with configuring a boot from SAN installation. This ends this UCS Advantage video. 
where we show how unique capabilities in the Cisco UCS system can lead to simplified deployment models with much faster service turnaround to meet the increasing demands of the business. Please go to www.cisco.com slash go slash UCS for printed collateral, including a brochure that highlights the information shown in this video. Thank you.